All right, and then, Lieutenant, once you're seated, if you will remove your mask, you can adjust the microphone and then make sure you speak directly into the microphone so we can hear your testimony. And then, Mr. LaFrenzi, the microphone yesterday at your stand, I had them move down so that the dispatcher could hear the 911 call. If you'll put it up directionally so that I, I had a hard time hearing Mr. Gordon. <coughs> you may proceed. Thank you, Judge. Uh, good morning, sir. If you would introduce yourself to the jury by telling them your full name and spell your last name for the court. Uh, my name is William Horner. Uh, last name is H-O-R-N-E-R. -E I'm a lieutenant on the Akron Fire Department. And how long have you been, have you been with the Akron Fire Department? Uh, 18 years this December. And prior to that, did you have any fire or law enforcement experience? No, not before that, no. All right. And in order to become a fireman uh, for the Akron Fire Department, uh, we've had some prior testimony about that, but uh, did you go through all the normal training that's required? Yes, through the city of Akron, yes. All right. And um, are you a, a certified um, fireman for the state of Ohio? I am. And what did you have to do to get that certification? Um, upon getting hired by the city of Akron, they posted the academy, which is uh, State Certified Academy, at the end of the 12-week program, then you take the state test on a passing score, among um, other physical things that you have to do, skill-based tests. Uh, once you get through that, then you're certified as a state fireman. All right, and once you became certified and hired with the Akron Fire Department, um, what were your um, job duties at that point in time? Uh, I was also a paramedic when I got hired. So when you work for the city of Akron, you are a paramedic and a firefighter. So your day-to-day -day calls, whether it's EMS, um, fire-related stuff, um, extinguishing fires, uh, rescue operations that are fire, ventilation, throwing ladders, pulling hose lines, I mean, pretty much all the stuff that you that the city firefighter did. Okay. And um, you said you're currently a lieutenant. How long have you been a lieutenant? Um, I was promoted to lieutenant in 2018. So at the time of this incident, I was not a lieutenant, but I've become a lieutenant since. And what would your rank have been at that point? Uh, firefighter. All right. So it doesn't go firefighter, sergeant, lieutenant, does no. it? No. There is, it just goes firefighter and lieutenant? Yes, correct. Right. So you've been a lieutenant uh, recently, but at the time you were a firefighter? Correct. So let me direct uh, your, well, at that time, talking about uh, May 15th of 2017, um, were you assigned to any particular apparatus? Uh, in May of 17, I was assigned to engine four on the A shift, uh, at station four. And what shift would that be? Uh, a shift. Uh, I mean, a t um, strike that. Your shifts last how long? Uh, 24 hours. So we start at 7.30 in the morning to 7.30 in the morning the next day. All right. There was testimony previously that the fire at 693 had started during the middle of the night. Correct. Um, were you there for the initial uh, suppression of the fire? No. All right. So you would have come on at 7.30 that morning. Correct. At the point you got there to work, mm -hmm. You were then dispatched to the scene? Yes, 693 volts. And at that point in time, approximately when would you have gotten there? Um, most of us get to work before 730, so it would have been pretty close to 730 to get uh, the C shift off on time or as close to getting them off on time. All right. So you basically did a shift change right there at the scene? Correct. And at that scene, at the time you got there, somewhere around 730, um, what was the status of the fire at that house? Uh, for the most part, the, the house had been extinguished, but it was still smoldering. There were still some hot spots for us to hit. So that was some of our initial instructions when we got there um, because there were still spots that were burning. And um, the house was pretty heavily damaged. So there were some things that were going to have to happen because on top of us still having to put out any hot spots, uh, places that were still burning, we were to look for and find the victims that were believed to be in uh, the house. Okay. Um, and Judge, trying to, and this is not. Well, for annotation purposes? Yeah, I know. Uh, I don't have control somehow. When I'm pushing the button, it's not giving me to be able to switch to the um, laptop. Oh, why'd you do that? You press the screen. So they have a button, and no, then you don't push the button, you push the screen. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, yeah. And I hit the annotate button, so you should be able to go in there. Hold on. Maybe he has to hit it from back there. See the annotate button on the left side of this? It's a button, not the touch screen, Mr. Tom and Fizzy. Underneath the main menu screen, on your left, this little black box right here. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about Mr. On this Danger. black box behind your laptop. Yes. Hit the annotate button. Okay. Mr. Yeah. I'm continually trying to make Mr. Gorman feel technologically uh, adequate. Thank you. <laughs> okay, sir. Um, showing you, and uh, Joe, what, what number are we on here? 113. 113. I'm, I'm showing you what we have previously uh, marked as states 113. <clears throat> which is a PowerPoint which contains several slides and photographs which I want to go through with you, okay? So this first um, slide, which is A, slide one of 50, um, it's, it shows a title screen. This is for the record more than for you. Um, it indicates 693 Fultz, Akron, Ohio, Summit County, Akron Fire Department, May 15, 2017. So you've already testified on May 17th, uh, May 15th, 2017, you were called to that fire around 7.30 in the morning. Is that true? Yes. All right, and that was 693 Fultz, and what city, county, and state was that in? Um, Akron, Ohio, Summit County. Okay. Showing you um, slide number two or letter B, do you recognize this? Yes. And what is that? Uh, that's basically Fultz Street, and then that is the address, or that is the structure that was on fire trying to attend to the road there. All right. And essentially, the, the, the slide that I'm showing you is similar to um, the map that's displayed on the easel that you just pointed to with the, the uh, indicator, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. When you arrived on scene, uh, I'm now showing you slide C, excuse me, uh, yeah, slide C, which just says exterior, title screen saying exterior of 693 faults, correct? Yes. All right. So now I'm going to show you. Slide number four of 50, or letter D, do you recognize this? Yes. And what is this? Uh, this would be the front of the house, or the A side of the structure, as we refer to it. Now, obviously, as you've gotten there, we can see it's, it's light in the background, correct? Yeah, this is a little before we got there. It's not quite 7.30 yet, okay. but um, yes, that is the front of the house. All right. And clearly, we can see the ladders and things of that nature that are used by the, your department, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, and we actually see on the left lower corner, what is, is, is that water or is that a sunshine right here? Can I, can I move this screen a little bit towards me? Yeah, yeah it's, on a, it's on a hinge. Okay. That looks like it's water right there because I don't think there's enough sunlight to hit that, but I believe there's probably water. Because, again, there was a bunch of different areas that were still smoldering, as you can see. Some of that steam, but some of that is still smoke from areas that are still burning. All right. And then showing you... Um, slide 50, slide 5 of 50, and letter E. And this would have been even earlier than, than your arrival. Is that fair? Yeah, it's, it's, it still looks to be pretty dark. All right. But even at this point, it seems or appears that the flames have been subsided and it's smoldering at this point. Yeah, for the most part. Again, there's going to be little pockets with the insulation and all the different stuff that's in your house that can burn. It's still smoking. But for the most part, the bulk of the fire would have been knocked down, correct? All right. And now I'm going to show you um, slide seven uh, of 50, which is letter G. Do you recognize that? Mm -hmm. Front of the house, sorry. All right. Front of the house? Front of the house, I'm sorry. All right. And just in, in case we've talked about uh, alpha, you know, uh, is it alpha? It's al alpha. So the street side of the house that your address is on is the A side or alpha side going clockwise. Um, this side would be B side, the back side would be C side, and then the right side of the house would be D or Delta. All right, and I think the jury's already been explained that a little bit okay. too, so, right. and just letting you know you can use okay, those terms. Okay. Okay. So, um, so this is the A side of the house, and would this approximate what it looked like when you were there at that time? Actually, there's a lot of stuff that's been removed, a lot of debris, because if you go to one of the previous slides that you showed, there was still quite a bit of stuff okay. on the porch. Um, and this looks to be later in the day. Um, 
I can't really tell by this picture if we've even started shoring up yet um, to get the victims out. But this is probably significantly after we got there, if that makes sense. This is later on in the afternoon, oh, early afternoon, I guess, probably before we removed the victims. Okay. Um, but as far as the house portion goes, I know like on the ground and stuff, it looks like the, the, the porch may have been cleared, but the house, this is basically the, sure. the way it ended up after the, the fire was suppressed. Correct. Okay. When you get to the fire, when you arrived at this fire, were you then informed through your company or whoever was there the prior shift that there were potential victims in this case? Yes. And how many, if you know, victims were you told to, that you needed to search for? Uh, initially, they told us eight because they weren't sure about the one daughter that had been away at work. So um, the neighbors had informed the fire companies, <clears throat> excuse me, on scene that there were potentially eight people in the house and that other than seeing um, a, a body part hanging through the ceiling from the second floor to the first floor, they were not sure where else the other victims were. All right, so let's talk about that. When you got to this scene, this house was pretty um, badly damaged, so to speak. Correct. Um, is there safety concerns for the firemen at that point? Absolutely. So when we initially got on scene, other than the <clears throat> report of trying to locate the potentially eight victims, um, we were not to enter on the first floor because it was heavily damaged. Um, we could not go into the second floor windows because it was so heavily damaged. The first the, um, ceiling or the floor of the second floor was hanging down a couple of feet. So when you peered in through the front door, you could actually see some of the floor joists or support members that were hanging down in front of the door. Right. So um, we could not enter until there was proper shoring or securing of that structure to prevent harming us. All right, and is that where, you, when you said you could see part of the floor coming down, you said there was a, a body part Correct. that was recognized. Do you, and what was an arm or leg? Uh, it looked to be an arm, it ended up being an arm. So you said about the support and shoring up. Do you guys have a team that does that? Yes, we do. Uh, Station 7 um, houses our TRA team, our Tactical Rescue Operations team. So upon, I'm not sure what time in the morning that they told them, but they knew with us searching for victims and having to go in there that they were going to have to be called out to support that damaged part of the floor so we could go in there and adequately search and remove the victims. So I, I don't know what time they started them, but I do know they were called for um, to shore up the floor. Okay. <clears throat> Just give me a moment. I'm trying to get this mouse to work here. I'm going to show you uh, slide 38, letter double L. Um, what are we looking at here? Well, this is the front door. So we would be standing on the porch taking a picture through the front door. And what you see with those pieces of wood that's not burned, those were the shoring uh, devices that they put in to keep the floor from sagging any more than it already dropped down. You can see how significant of a drop it had been. Um, so they're not. When they go in to do this, they're not trying to raise it back up to where it was. They're just trying to keep it in place so we can do what we need to do to get the victims out. All right. So uh, can you see the mouse on the screen there? I can. So with this, what you were describing, is this the floor here? Yeah, so what you're, what you're right there, if you go up a little bit, that is a floor joist. So that's what supports the weight of your house. So those run about... 14 to 16 inches apart, and that was burned through and damaged and hanging down. So those were visible through the front door. So what they did is they went back through and put those shoring on those members to hold them in place. All right, so the, this is what was added by the trot team just to keep the floor up from caving in. Correct. All right. Even having done that, was it safe for you and your team to be able to go on to the second floor for your recovery efforts or your search efforts? Um, Still no. So what ended up happening was 
That room was so heavily damaged, and then what would be the Bravo Charlie bedroom of the kids was so heavily damaged, the floor was burned through completely. So there was a bathroom on the Charlie Delta corner, and on the Charlie side wall, that wall had not been breached. So what we ended up doing was we cut a hole in between the studs, and then we took our roof ladders and we laid them down across the floor, um, two of them, I believe, to get to the front room here on the second floor. And then the trot team cut us pieces of plywood and it basically served as scaffolding. So we laid the plywood down on the ladder, used the part of the house that was still secure, leaned up against that, and then that's how we walked back and forth. But we had to stay on those ladders for the most part because of how unstable that floor was. All right, so so basically you had like a catwalk rigged yes. in the second floor so that you could safely be up there. Correct. All right. How many people actually ended up going to the second floor? Um, it was myself, Lieutenant Barker, and Lieutenant Mills in the front room, and <clears throat> Lieutenant uh, Todd Webb was standing on the front porch taking pictures um, for evidence purposes, and then we had basically formed a line. So we were in that front room, and then I believe there was two or three more guys in that bathroom, and then we were handing them out to other guys on the back porch, on the roof of that uh, back porch, to uh, get the victims down. So we tried to limit it as much as possible because of the added weight would just add more stress to those members. All right. And um, you, I don't know, let me just see, showing you now, um, slide 17 or Q out of 50, uh, do you recognize this photo? I do. So this is going to be a little bit deceiving. So what you're looking at here, where that garage door is, is actually the basement. So above that would be the first floor. And then where those, you can kind of see them, the two firemen standing up on the roof. That is where we were bringing the victims out. We cut a hole in that wall, which is right in front of them. And then they would carry the victims down the ladder into oh, the back. Down, and this is the ladder here? Correct. Okay. So this entire operation, not only did you have your victims, but your was your safety an issue during this period of time? It was. We still had to be careful, even though we took every precaution necessary. There was such a large amount of damage, we still had to be very cognizant of where we were stepping, how we were moving them. Um, those kind of things. All right. <clears throat> you had said that Sergeant Webb, um, or Lieutenant Webb, um, was on the porch, he was taking photographs. Was he on a ladder, or, I mean, how was he taking photographs? Yeah, so that one picture you showed me where I had the ladder up in the front porch, yes. that I believe is the ladder he was standing on. All right, and that, let's see, going back here, is this the yeah. one you're talking about? Or yes. one of the ones. This is slide that, seven uh, or G. Because in the one photo, the ladder was in between the windows, yeah. but I do believe that was the window he was taking most of the pictures from. Okay. So once you were upstairs, um, and I'm going to show you, uh, slide 21, or you, do you recognize this? If not, it's okay. Actually, I'm trying to see where that is. That's okay. I'll, I'll, let me Let's use say, a different I do not. That's okay. So let me, um, so slide uh, 19 of 50 is a title slide. It's also letter S, interior of 693 Fult, second floor, okay? So I'm gonna show you now uh, slide 20. You see that? Yes. Can you, rec do you recognize that? So this is where, it looks, this is where we cut into that bathroom, and then that's where our ladder was, and then below that window you can see through the front of the house, because that's where there was that much damage and it started to drop down. Okay, and, and so where you're at now, um, what, 
Is there a doorway here? That's a doorway right in front of you. So okay, right that, here. Oops. I just didn't recognize it because I couldn't see the bottom. But this looks to be the bathroom doorway. And if I remember correctly, there are stairs to the left of this ladder on the other side of that doorway that go downstairs. All right. And, and just so we're clear, what side of the house is this window on? The window that we're looking at? The one in the, the middle of the picture. That's going to be the A side. That's the front of the house. All right. And so where would the bedroom be in relation to this photograph? So the bedroom is where that window is. Okay. So where the bedroom can find. All right. So this is the bedroom window in the front of the house. Correct. And this is the ladder that goes to the back of the house where everybody was being taken out. Correct. All right. So showing you now slide uh, 22 or letter V, uh, this is also a title screen, second floor front bedroom, is that fair? Yes. Okay, so this next photograph here, slide 23 or W, do you recognize this? Yes, that's the front bedroom. All right, and this is the doorway to that bedroom? This is the doorway to the bedroom and you can see the front of the house, the front yard. All right. Because that's where the floor dropped out. And let me see if I can get the cursor to work here. All right, so on here, this is that front window we were just looking at in the other slide, correct? Correct. And you can see through this opening here, correct? Correct. And where is the floor in this photograph? So, Lieutenant, on the right-hand corner of your screen, touch it. Up top on the right-hand corner. There you go. See that? Texas. Yeah. I think you have to take it. I think I have to take it. I think I have to take it. No, I'll do it again. Sorry. Okay. Okay, try it again. Get it. Don't be afraid. Yeah. I'll break it. No, you're not. <laughs> Well, we have a All right. Maybe I can just use this pointer here. See the pointer? Yeah. All right. So tell me where would the floor, where is the floor supposed to be? The floor is supposed to be where that straight line is. Go down right there. See, that's where the floor is supposed to be attached. Right here. Correct. And so the, so the reason we see this is this floor is dropped. Correct. All right. And, um, all this debris that's on the floor, is that, where is, can you tell or could you tell where that came from? Was that something that seemed to be there already or is that something as a result of the fire or the fire suppression? Well, the ceiling is still intact. From the best I can tell, the wall, the front wall is still intact. So this, all of this right here would have been what looks to be the contents of the bedroom. All right. And of course that, during the fire suppression of that, there's lots of water and things sure. that are used, and so it may not be in the condition it was at the time prior to the fire. Is that fair? Yeah, I'm sure the water is going to cause some damage. Sure. Okay. All right, showing you slide 24 or letter X. What are we looking at here? So this looks to be when you're standing in the doorway of that bedroom that we were just looking through. So that would be to the right. So that would be the AB corner of the house. And then you can see a bed frame and you can see how much the floor has sagged down right here underneath that window. So that's how much it's dropped down. You can actually see a victim. Okay, so, but, so this window here is the one we had been looking at? No, that's the one next to it. All right, so there's a window over here. Correct. And this is where you're talking about the floor? Yeah, the floor should be right there where that open space is. That's where the floor is supposed to attach. Okay. And obviously you can see the street and the fire engine here. Correct. Now in this photograph, as you can see, it's a lot of stuff going on in this room, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. And at this point in time, this is the first time we can actually see a victim in this in this photograph, fair? Correct. All right, and that would be in this area right down here? Yes. All right. Showing you now slide, <clears throat> oops, I'm sorry. 
25 of 50. Now what are we looking at here? Again, standing in that doorway, um, facing more in the middle of the room, you can see that victim uh, right here in the middle of the screen, but then you can start to see a couple other victims um, up kind of underneath that first window we were looking up towards the corner here. Nope, right there, go down. Right in there, there's a victim right there. And then there's appears to be, we weren't sure at the time, uh, it ended up being there's a small child underneath that victim right here. in the middle. Yes, correct, that's their face. And in this here, is this, what is this? Is this part of the floor? Well, there was, a, there was a dresser there and there was some clothes and stuff. So there was some other things that were up against that wall. Um, and I can't remember if it was like right on top of, because that ended up being mom right there. Um, I can't remember if it was right on top of her, but there were some other items in the room too that we had to kind of work around to get the victims out. All right, and this is mom here? That's dad. Mom That's is the one right there. Right here, yeah. okay. So we're talking, Angela, well, you didn't know the names, did you? No, sure? okay. nope. All right. So showing you slide 26 of 50, do you recognize this? Yes, that is, um, you can't really see all of the victim, but that appears to be the uh, leg of the victim right there, which ended up being mom right there. All right. And slide 27. Just a different, basically that's from the front of the house. Okay. Um, so now we're looking back through the window. Not, the, win not the window. You're probably sitting, they're probably sitting on the front porch, but the floors dropped down so much they just took the picture right there. I see. And so this is mom and this is... I think that's father. the that, yeah, the father okay. said. All right. Slide twenty eight. This is similar, but an overview. Yes. So that I'm guessing this is where um, Lieutenant Todd Webb, Todd Webb, I'm sorry, was taking a picture through that first window on okay. the right, um, and kind of coming the opposite direction instead of looking from the doorway from the window, so you can see. Mom on the right hand side, you can see dad. But again, there's a lot of debris, so we really weren't sure other than seeing those three victims where, where everybody else was laying. Okay. So let's talk a moment now. So th this is how it appeared when you showed up and began your search and recovery. Correct. All right. At this point in time, you still don't know how many people are there, right? Correct. And that's because of the, the debris and everything else around. Is that fair? Correct. All right. So at some point in time, obviously it's important to make sure you recover everyone, fair? Mm -hmm. What process did you go through in order to count or label or identify the individuals that were taken out? Well, initially, sorry. Um, when we had first... Uh, hold on oh, a second. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I minimize this here. I didn't realize it was still here. So hold, hold on a second. All right, so tell us about the process that you used to, um, to re recover, remove, and identify the individuals that were in that house. Well, initially when we arrived on scene, like I had told you that uh, there was potentially eight victims, but other than the one um, body part hanging through the ceiling, we weren't sure how many were in there. So because the first two floors were heavily damaged, um, they actually sent us up to the third floor first because we weren't sure if they were trying to seek, you know, uh, refuge and trying to hide it, but we weren't sure. So went up there, started looking around, didn't see anybody on the first floor, but then we saw what ended up being the teenage son on the, or the attic stairs going to them. That was, other than the arm hanging through the uh, ceiling, that was the first victim that we saw. So we cleared the third floor because it was safe to do so. So we were up there moving around, there wasn't much fire damage, so we looked up there and concluded there was no other victims up there. And what was that third floor? Was it It was attic? a bedroom. It, oh. it appeared to be the teen's bedroom. The teen oh. son's bedroom. Was it an attic that was used as a bedroom type of situation? It was, a, it was a finished attic. So a lot of those older homes, the attics are finished, and then either they use them for storage, a lot of times they're utilized for bedrooms. All right. And so you came through the attic, or the, excuse me, the third floor bedroom, and when you come down those steps, is where you find... We actually didn't come down the stairs because they were pretty heavily damaged, okay. unstable underneath. But what we did do is we thought we saw his leg or his shoe. So looking down the, looking down the stairs, um, we kind of brushed uh, him off with one of our tools and then saw him laying there. 
So other than the first victim that we saw on the second floor, he would have been the next one that we had found. And then after that, after we cleared the third floor is when we kind of switched our efforts to trying to find everybody that we could on the second floor. All right. <clears throat> And if I could have a moment, Judge, I'm just trying to make sure I take the right slides. Okay. Sure. Maybe between instead of minimum, you can just go back to the title screen if you wanted to. Well, I thought min I thought I could minimize it and it would just but it didn't do that. So switching for me. Well, the problem, Judge, is, is I, on the screen here, it's working, and it, it's, it was not projecting there, it was on here. Yeah. All right. Okay. I think we're back on track. I think maybe with the annotation thing, it changes things a little bit. So, I'll just anticipate what the court room monitors when it needs to. Okay, thank you, Judge. I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> Lieutenant, if you could tell us if you recognize this photograph, which is slide 36 or uh, letter double J. Okay, this would be the third floor bedroom. And the viewpoint you're looking at from right now, I believe, is where we came in that window to search around in there. You came in a window the, the behind window you? behind us, yeah. Okay. And then from that room, from that bedroom, what are we looking at here? These are the stairs, if you can, you can kind of see um, right below. I'm not sure if those are my feet or not, but right below uh, whoever's feet those are, how, the stairs are damaged right there. And at the bottom of the stairs is where the victim is laying. All right. And so I'm going to show you. Slide, and by the way, that was slide 34, double H, and now I'm going to sh show you slide 35, double I. And so is this where you're looking at the bottom, closer up yes. to the bottom of the steps? Correct, correct. And, and right in this area, oh. and right in this area here, is this the young man? Yes. show you slide number 
31 of 50 double E. This photograph here is it's the same stairwell. Correct. But from the downstairs level. But from the second floor bedroom where the other victims were. All right. And so I know it's hard to see here, but was this a, the green here? Is that his shirt? Yes. And would these be his legs bent? Yes. Okay. So as you, um, and I'm just going to go to a different screen here just for the moment. So as you went through and tried to recover the individuals, um, were they, um, who did the actual physical recovery? In the front floor bedroom, or I'm sorry, the, the front bedroom of the second floor, it was Lieutenant Mills, Lieutenant Barker, and myself, and then we lifted them up. Uh, Lieutenant Todd Webb took his photos and then we handed them back down that line of guys to get them outside. All right, and he took the photos from the window? The window, on right. the ladder. Okay. Um, and then did you, when you pull those people up, you didn't know who they were, right? No. So did you label them in some way just to keep straight? We, we did not label them, but uh, Lieutenant Webb, I believe, as we lifted them up, so I think the first victim we removed was victim A. And okay. then the second was victim, and then so on and so forth. And then that's how he labeled them. And then after that, they were labeled by name. And, and that's just, I'm sorry, and that's just to keep a record of yeah. how things happen in case it becomes important later. Sure. Right. And so I'm going to show you then um, first of all, Going back to slide 28, double B, this is the photograph that we see of, of, I believe you said this is the mother and the father, and then I'm gonna to go to slide uh, 29 or double C. As you can see, it looks like similar, very similar picture, um, but it's labeled, is that fair? Yes. And this, uh, there's a person here up on top of the screen, oh, I'm sorry. The person on top of the screen, uh, who do you believe that to be? It's either myself or Lieutenant Mills, but we talked about it. I think that I think that's me because there were three of us in there. All right. Now, I, I noticed when you came in today, your one arm has lots of tattoos yeah. on it, but in the picture, there's no tattoos on this arm. I didn't have any of the tattoos at the time. Okay. So so that doesn't mean it's not you. It just, right. Okay. All right. So as we did this, and we'll kind of go through this quickly, here you have labeled uh, victim A, um, and was that the, do you believe the first person to be brought out? It's, it's difficult to see here, um, but what we ended up doing was, you can't really tell from this angle, but she had an infant that she appeared to be, or a very small child that she appeared to be holding. And then when she fell, the baby was next to her. So that was actually, I believe, the first victim we took out and then so on and so forth. All right. It's just difficult to see in this picture. Yes, okay. And I'm just going to go to um, this slide here just to get off that screen. Um, can you go through, and I'm going to use pictures now. They've kind of seen what the room looks okay. like. They've seen the labeling of the individuals. How many people did you actually find? Seven. All right. And uh, were there any pets or animals? Um, again, in that picture, it's difficult to see. There was a family dog that was next to... On, basically the mom's left side, and then the small child was kind of right by her. So right. there was a family dog there. It's labeled, but um, again, it's difficult to see. Once we started moving some of the debris around, it was easier to identify. Um, but yeah, the family pet, the mom, the baby, and then the dad. And the okay, and, and you're talking about here, it says labeled family pet. And yeah, it's like right in that area. Right and there. although you can't see it necessarily in the picture, you're telling us that the, the family Pet is there. What, what kind of animal did you say it was? It was a dog. A dog. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so tell us, you said you believe that the first person you took out was the child, the baby? Yeah, because again, once we started moving some stuff around, because um, there's a lot of debris there, so we started moving some of the drywall, some of the clothing, um, there was a dresser, there was some blankets and stuff, and then the easiest order to remove them in regards to, because the floor was still unstable, um, 
and the adult victims are a lot more difficult to move, that was going to take multiple people lifting them up. So we tried to um, do it as easy as possible to get the victims out as best that we could. Um, Fair to say it's not a pleasant process? No. It was not pleasant at all. So where where did you find, can you tell us where you found each individual? Because I know in the pictures you can't tell. So you said the baby was with the mother. Correct. All right. And then where, who else did you find? And I know you don't necessarily know the names, but. Sure. Um, like I said, it appeared the mom was holding the infant, and then we saw the teenage son in the stairwell. So there's, there, <clears throat> there's those three and then the family pet. Um, what you couldn't really see, we saw the, the face of the one child um, kind of underneath dad's chest, but then there was two other small children that were underneath him as well. Okay. Um, yeah. And you found them once you removed dad? Yes, because you, you could not see them at all until we started moving dad. And then once they were removed and taken down the ladder um, outside, ultimately it was um, Lieutenant Webb then uh, trying to identify each individual that was brought out. Yeah, I believe so. <clears throat> Lieutenant Warner, um, the several pictures that I've showed you today, um, do they accurately represent the scene as you saw it that day? On, May 15, 2017. Yeah, I, I, they're accurate. Thank you. I have no further questions. Mr. Gorman. Thank you. <coughs> Lieutenant, we don't have any questions for you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Lieutenant, thank you for your testimony. You're excused. You may call your next witness. We may call Lieutenant Webb. Go ahead. Judge, if you could. I'm going to just try and set the screen up again if you could just 